Welcome back to the Daily Buzz 716. Our first guest today is a world-renowned speaker, entrepreneur, best-selling author, a business mentor, and he's here with us today. So welcome, Carl Gould. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. You're like kind of a big deal. You said kind of a big deal. <laughs> well, the big deal is we want all the details we can possibly get so that our viewers can know what they can do to build their business. Build their business. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. Before we talk about that, oh yes, I'm, I'm we got to know all I, your business. I am, no. I am derailing you, lady. <laughs> Before we talk about that, I want to hear about you, Carl, personally. You know, you've you've done great things, but you, you came from business. somewhere. Mm -hmm. I came from a very large town of 1,200 people in northern New Jersey called Riverdale. Oh. Tiny, tiny little town. I'm That's familiar. I stayed in Montclair. Oh, is that yes. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right up the road, right up the road. Yeah, yeah. suburb of New York City. Yeah, just uh, about 30 miles west mm -hmm. of New York City. And um, I have five sisters. I have four brothers. I'm one of 10 kids. Wow. And I grew up in a very entrepreneurial family. Mm. So What number are you in the 10? I'm like number five. He's number five. Right in the middle. Five. In the middle. Right in the middle. middle of the road. My oldest sister is nine years older than me. My youngest is nine years younger than me. Wow. So 10 kids, 18 What's years. symmetry? Can you believe it? Your mom five and five are like the Brady Bunch on Stillman. She was very busy. So you, you grew up in an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial family. So, yeah. so I'm assuming your father, your mother, your family had a business? Yeah, my, my mother was one of the very first network marketers. She was a Stanley Home Products uh, brand ambassador, as they would probably call them today. And my, my father had his own computer consulting firm. Um, half of my brothers and sisters had their own business. And wow. so, uh, you know, I, it kind of ran in the family. So growing up, you just knew you were going into business. I was pretty well, yeah. The king I, of your castle. Uh, well, king of the, well, I hope to be king of the castle someday. I still aspire <laughs> to that. But yeah, I went to school for accounting and finance. Mm -hmm. um, thought I was going to take that path, but I had a pretty bad leg injury in college, and so I left school and I started my first construction company. When and that's I was 18. where you started in construction. That's uh, landscaping was my first business. All yeah. right. Okay. So I mean, awesome. that's that's really um, that's very interesting. You took something that was would have been looked at as very negative. You know, you injure right. your leg and you drop out of school. And you know, there's a big push right now. Everybody's got to go to college. I don't know that I agree with that, but there's a big push. Everybody's got to go to college. That's right. You drop out. You didn't drop out and, you know, sit home on the couch and I'm going to go in the basement and play video games all day. You started your own business. Yeah, well, I found out after about six months of just uh, rehab and physical therapy that all of my scholarships went away, all the grants that I had were gone. And, you were playing with sport. And everyone that loaned me money wanted it back. Mm -hmm. Go figure, you know? <laughs> and so uh, I said, you know, I've got to, what do, what do I know? What do I know how to do to make money? And um, I had been, I had a landscaping job all through high school mm -hmm. and um, so I my boss taught me the business pretty well and so I said let me give it a let me give it a shot and so August of 2000 of 1985 is when I got started so you Amazing. were one of those guys with a pickup truck and the lawnmower in the back absolutely and the clippers and pretty the, much that you saw so you saw me <laughs> that was me I, you know Carl said what do I know right I think that's so important you asked yourself what do I know what do I know what could I do and I looked around and I said you know what I see other people out there doing it why if 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 that if they could do it why not me and so you know I gave it a shot and just built uh, you know one project after another and so was it just you or did you have a crew or in the beginning it was just me then I bought on one or two guys but mm -hmm. by the second year I learned a few things very early on in my business that really helped me they were really lifelong lessons and um, and that really helped me starting tell in us the, what those things were yeah well yeah so the first thing I learned was um, I, I went out on my very first three appointments and I and I got all three I got the first one. I'm like, wow, you know, it's pretty good. So it's a house, somebody, you're doing somebody's house, yard? A residential project, then a commercial one, okay. then another residential okay. one. I, I went three for three, my first three. I wow. called my father up and I said, Dad, you're not going to believe this. I got three in a <laughs> row. And he said, why don't you go check out why they said yes? Um, and I said, oh, good idea. Let Very me go back sure. and ask them. And the number one answer that I got as the reason why I was hired was, I was the one who showed up. Mm. Oh, now that oh. in itself is a standard. That Woody Allen says That's ninety percent of life is showing it's up. It's just showing up. Absolutely, Very interesting. and yeah. Now speaking of showing up, you said you just to dial back. You said your mom was in network marketing. Yeah. Why didn't you decide to go down that path? 
Well, I, I felt like I kind of knew the business pretty well because I, I would go to all of her in, in home parties, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I would carry all the boxes and set up the displays and all that. But I just, uh, the, my, both sides of my family were in construction and at that time that was the only business I really knew. I did it well and so I figured this must, it, it seemed logical at the time. Work You're outside level. in the sunshine, mm -hmm. sit inside with a bunch of ladies talking, <laughs> gossiping about products. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Cleansers, the whole bit. Right. So, uh, from 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 your background, we can see that you really had a foundation. You really had a foundation mm -hmm. yep. in in being a self-made person, right? You're right. both your mother and your father, and I know in Western New York, all across the country, that's that's like the American dream, right? I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be in charge of my own life, and um, people tend to jump into that. Sure. Maybe a little blindly, right? What type of research should someone who's looking at starting their own business, potential business owners do in their marketplace, in their hometown. Well, now it's your, your marketplace is more than your hometown. Sure, sure. Well, if you, if you uh, yeah, and, and today's business environment is so much different than it was when I, even when I got started. So let me take you back to the dinosaur age, pre-Jurassic, like mm -hmm. when there was no internet in the 90s, you know? And uh, back then you would just, you, what you would do is you would find out, is the market big enough for what mm -hmm. my product is and can I get it to them? So at the time I said, are there enough people that want landscaping and can I do landscaping work for this group, I determined that was a yes, so I went with it. Mm -hmm. But in today's day and age, I don't care what your product is, I don't care what your service is, there is a market. Um, so any crazy idea you think you have, there's a business behind it. Today, the decision you need to make is, can I just bring it to the market you know, consistently and profitably? And what is your market too? What market right. are you bringing it to? Well, but the internet now allows you to connect yeah, anywhere. Everywhere. So, so. The, the, you're, you're suggesting that whatever the idea is, you will find an audience. Oh, there's already an audience. I mean, there are seven billion people on the planet. There will be 10 billion by the time we finish our <laughs> lives. And most of that world is connected. Mm -hmm. So we're in a world now where you know, where, you know, a local tribal, uh, you know, manufacturer in South America or in Africa can be connected to, you know, a co-op group, which then can, you know, bring things to market. So as you talked about the market in itself and being able to pretty much reach people from wherever we are, how important do you believe social media is in playing a key factor in business? Yeah, social media, I, I, I call social media a weapon of mass connection. Yes, it is. Right? <laughs> you, for good or for better or for worse. Right. Um, and um, social media is the, is the word of mouth referral on steroids. Mm -hmm. So the greatest <laughs> referral you can have is word of mouth. One person says, hey, I really like that. Maybe you would want to do that too. I can now do that in mass on my Facebook page. If I can get you to like me, then I not only get you, I get all of your followers because mm -hmm. they trust you and, and vice versa. Right. So, so location is no longer okay. important, mm -hmm. is it? No, the lo your, your website and your social media presence is your location. Mm -hmm. If you have bricks and mortar, that's cool. If you service mm -hmm. your local community, that's cool. But you, you have to be online and you have to be online in a significant way. Mm -hmm. Things have changed and yeah. we're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. Stay here. We've got more to come with Carl Gould. Mm -hmm.